Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report where I share my 40 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Well, folks, we're coming into what I believe is going to be the biggest week we've seen since this reopen trade has started. We've seen this massive recovery over the last four months. This rally is finally at a point that it's likely to be challenged as there's approximately 500 earnings reports to be released this week. And there are major players coming out, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, a ton of regional banks, the brokerage firms, Deutsche Bank, which will give us a view of what's going on in Europe. There's also airlines, drug companies, you name it. It is a big week we're coming into. As far as an economic release has come this week, it's very benign. There's very few things. On Thursday, unemployment claims and the continuing claims will be the focus. There's not a lot of other things coming out, some housing starts, some other really low-level information. But this week, it's going to be about the forward-looking statements that we get out of these companies. There's a number of things that I will discuss in the technical section that I believe are also telling us that we're going to see a hesitation and there's going to be consolidation and some downside in these markets. There's very little, it appears, from a fundamental standpoint that's going to be able to trigger the market into the next level. This week's reports are going to set the tone for the next four to six weeks, potentially all the way into September, as the information that we're likely to receive will definitely tell us a lot about the corporate attitude and especially the companies that are willing to give us forward-looking guidance. Let's take a look at the charts and see what this week is looking like. As we begin tonight, before going through the technical section, I want to cover the database. And if you haven't set up an account, you can go to PortfolioExpert.com. That's expert with no E in it. And you can set up a free account and you can get to this dashboard. Now, this will give you an overview of our intermediate database. There were only 137 net buys on the system for the intermediate. So it's starting to stall out here. The equities are currently at 48.64% long, ETFs 52.86, and mutual funds at 62.61. As we look down through the database, some rotation starting to happen. I've been discussing the rotation over the past week and you're seeing some red and green. So there's some new buys and there's some sells. And this is classic at this stage of the development of this trend where you start to see a fair amount of rotation. As we go down and look at the groups, the same all the way through, this is likely to continue over the next several weeks. We're currently on the overall database about 62% long. I expect to see that pull back just slightly a few percent over the next couple of weeks as we start to see some consolidation. As I discussed in the opening comments, my expectations are we're going to see a consolidation at these levels with a downward bias. Taking a look at the WaveTech database, there was 276 new buys pushing the percent bullish up to 82.04. My expectations for this over the next several days is to see it start to roll over and the next two sessions will be critical and once we start to see a rollover, we could see a big reset in the daily database. I believe for the market to be in a place to be able to rotate and start another move to the upside, we're going to have to see this database move back toward the 50, maybe as low as 40% bullish before we'll be able to see a recycling. This is likely to take at least six weeks, maybe a little longer, and I do expect a pretty major hesitation here. The key thing to pay attention to as far as the database goes, it is very extended on a short-term basis. On an intermediate-term basis, this moves much slower as these trades are likely to stay on approximately 200 to 250 trading days. As we begin to look at the technicals on the futures, there's something that is very important to understand. We're seeing a substantial contraction in the market grid. The market grid adjusts to volatility. When it starts to contract like this, it typically will signal a reversal in the trend. So we're likely to see it move down toward the 
10-day moving average possibly going down to the 40-day moving average, which is currently at 3106. Taking a look at the grid today, there's a possibility for a move down toward the S3 level. We've so far this evening, we've already printed an S2 at 3195. This configuration suggests that the range is likely to be an R1 S2 range, possibly S3. Now, we've already printed also the R1 level overnight at 32.23. And there's been some steady pressure as we come into the London Open. I expect to see some selling pressure. Folks are getting a little nervous here as we come into this week of earnings reports. You'll also notice that the PPM1 is rolling over. It's still positive at a 0.10. PPM2 is flat, and PPM3 is also flat. It's at a plus 0.22, which suggests that a move toward those averages is likely. 31.30 is the 21-day moving average. The 40-day is at 31.05. So over the next two or three sessions, we're likely to see the markets move back to that level. Now, the key level above the market is the R1 level, which is 32.43 on the weekly market grid. A penetration of that level would take us up toward that 3280 level, which is a key pivot number. This week, we're likely to see be a high of 3243 and a low of 3153 with the possibility of going down to S3 3120. As we look at the cash, this is much more pronounced on the cash market. As you'll see, the range for today is compressing down. When we see this type of compression, it's likely to take out STX number, which based on the futures overnight activity, we're already trading around those levels. The next level would be on a weekly grid, which would suggest a move down to S2 to the S3 level between 3166 and 3136. The close today will be significant with the key pivot number on the cash above the markets at 3252 on the downside Looks like S2, S3 on a weekly basis could go as low as the 3108, which would be a move to the 10-week moving average, which is substantial support. Looking at the PPMs, it has penetrated its first derivative, suggesting the probabilities are high to move back into these ranges I just talked about between 3166 and 3136 this week. The key pivot number is 3252. And then here's that 3280 number, 3282.7, the upward pivot number. Don't expect to see that challenge this week. If it is challenged, then we could see higher markets. What it looks like right now is this sideways with volatility increasing over at least the next three to five days, possibly into the next several weeks. The same configuration is happening on the NASDAQ. Right now, they're down 45 handles, down just short of a half a percent. That same contraction is happening here. There's a much more pronounced pattern on the weekly charts, which I'll show you here in a minute. This contraction in that volatility is telling us that there's likely downside. And you can see that PPM1 is sliced through its first and second derivative, and we're starting to see a rollover. There are a couple of things that we need to watch for as we come into the, this week in the NASDAQ. And as I mentioned in the opening comments, we have a lot of major players coming out that are NASDAQ components that are likely to put some pressure on the markets if they miss on their earnings. As we look at the market grid, the downside this week is going to be pronounced between S2 and S3, which would be 10,300, 10,130. This is the NASDAQ futures. They should trade down in that range. We should hold, but there is a potential to, to print down to that 99.78 and see an extreme. Now, the key number here is the moving average is at 10,054. It's up at 1.51, so that's going to be substantial support. So S3 is likely to be the low. So an R1, S2, maybe an R1, S3 range for this week. It's interesting as we review the PPMs on a weekly NASDAQ that the PPM2 has turned up substantially and PPM3 is still in an uptrend. There is still a substantial underlying bid in this market and the longer term trends are very much in play. I am not discussing 
a major rollover and a collapse of the markets here. We're looking at a consolidation, some downside for the next several weeks, trading in a range that has somewhat of a downward bias. I don't see us getting below this 10 week moving average. So we could see the lows of the week made early Monday, Tuesday this week, and then trade back into the range. The key pivot on a weekly basis is that 10,774, which is R1, break over that, then we could see a retest of last week's high. I mentioned on Friday's video, it was critical that the NASDAQ closes under 10,337 to confirm an outside reversal. So that was not achieved. We closed above that level. We closed at 10,622, substantially above that. That sets the tone for this sideways trading range. Had we closed under 10,337, then that would have suggested that we would have challenged some more significant levels to the downside. Everything that I see looking at the equity markets right now are telling us that we're going to have this sideways range. The downward limits are limited to the 10-week moving average, both on the cash as well on as on the weekly on both the NASDAQ and the S&P. So these equity markets are going to see some downside. They're not likely to collapse from this position. Reviewing the 10-year treasuries, looking at the weekly graph, we're still seeing this sideways range hanging around this 0.62, staying above 0 0.60. It appears that we're setting up a potential move to go back toward the 0.72 possibly move toward the 0.80 level over the next couple of weeks. The PPMs are setting up a bottoming formation, but they have not signaled that there's still a substantial amount of downward pressure on these markets. The 10 week moving average on the 10 year is at 0.68. So there's going to be resistance there. We closed on Friday at 0.62. That level will be resistance. The next level will be 0.72. We're likely to stay in that level. I don't see this market going much lower from here, which confirms the analysis I just went through in the equities that there's not any major collapse, not going to be any flight to quality from this level. The last market I'm going to cover tonight is gold. Gold continues to go in this upper channel. You can see that the grid is climbing. However, we're starting to see some cracks in the PPM1 suggesting it's rolling over. Even though PPM2 is up, the support on PPM2 is at 1717. And I've talked a lot about this market and the 1760 level. That's still going to be the major support, even though we're managing to remain over 1800. On the upside, the key levels breakout number is 1840. It would be R3 on this chart. On the downside, we're looking at S2, 1789. We could see an R1, S2 this week, but it just looks like we're going to continue to climb in this pattern, as in the equities and these markets. There's no major collapse likely to happen here, just more consolidation. As we come into this earnings season, I think everything's going to be on hold. So this will complete the video for tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.